Praise the Lord. This is Sister Mae Jeffers here to tell you that prayer changes things. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. We want you to bless this, Lord, message and make it a blessing to all that hears. And we thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, we're, we're just so very happy. Praise God. We're so very, very happy to be able to bring you the message of the steps in faith. The steps in faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The steps in faith. That's uh, First, we want to talk about hearing. Hearing. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17. Now listen, children, get your Bibles. Because this is a teaching lesson. And I want to just tell you, if you play it over and over again, get these scriptures in your heart, get them settled, and learn them, and start to live them and apply them to your life, praise the Lord, they will certainly be a blessing to you. So get your Bibles, Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. And it reads as follows. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Praise the Lord. You start to hear the word of God and start applying it to your life. Hear the word of God. You've got to hear uh, how Daniel's been delivered from the lion den. And you hear how God's a healer. You hear how God's a deliverer. You hear how God has provided for people. You hear how God uh, blessed the widow that her oil bowl uh, never ran dry. You hear how God parted a Red Sea and the people went through on dry land. You start hearing these things and you say, oh yeah, right. You know, if he can do that for them, them, I'm sure he can do it for me. You know, when I first came to the Lord and I heard, praise God, plus I read it in his word, that the uh, first chapter of Samuel, where the Lord said to uh, Hannah, prayed and asked God, if you give me a man child, I'll give him back to you. Well, when I came to the Lord, I had three uh, girls. So I prayed this prayer to God, and I, and I conceived, praise God. And do you know what? God gave me a man child. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when he was nine years old, God claimed the sacrifice. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. And if evidence of speaking in tongues, praise the Lord. Went to school with his Bible. With, uh, you know, <laughs> pardon me. And the Lord really blessed the young man. That he's now 19 years old, six foot four, preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, you hear it. You read it. You hear it in the preaching. Praise God. And, and you read it. And we have to be careful now what we hear. I just want to back up this here. Let's turn to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. The fourth chapter, St. Mark. <clears throat> All right, I'm waiting for you now. Uh, because I want you to really get with me with this and, and study it, praise the Lord, and find it in the Word of God. Because I don't care who's preaching and who's talking to you. You should have your Bible and follow the Word of God. Because I even seen people read things wrong. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And sometimes we hear things wrong. So therefore, if you look with your eyes and you see it, praise the Lord, and then you hear, and the reinforcement, and it, and it isn't what I say that counts. It's what said the Word of God that counts. Because you can think as good as I can think, but there's what the Word of God is saying. All right? Fourth chapter of St. Mark, and it said, uh, uh, verse 23. I'm going to start reading at verse 23 of the fourth chapter of St. Mark. Fourth chapter, St. Mark. I'm going to start reading at verse 23. And it said, Any man have ear to hear, let him hear. Now, some people don't have an ear to listen to you. You ever start talking to people and you know they're not even tuned into what you're saying? Before you uh, finish what you're talking about, they've done cut you off and started on something else. They don't really have an ear to listen to you. They're not really interested in what you're trying to tell them. They don't have an ear to hear that. They're not open up. They're not tuned into you, praise the Lord. But this is said, any man has an ear to hear, let him hear. And 24 said, he said unto them, take heed what you hear. It's very important what you hear. Faith comes by hearing. Doubt comes the same way. You do not sit around and listen to a lot of negative things. Uh, you know, just like I, I people come around, I say, God's a healer. Oh, uh, you know, I don't believe God can heal. I don't think he can heal. You know, I don't listen to this. I don't crowd my mind with this kind of thing, praise the Lord. I know what the Lord could do. If I can't help you and bring you up, I'm not going to sit around and listen to your negative and doubt and then pull me down. 
This world is born in many ways and steeped in negativism. We were talking about that the other day. Children here from childhood, don't do this. I'm afraid you'll fall down. I'm afraid you'll get hit. I'm afraid this, oh, when I start to get old, I'm afraid I've lost my memory. I'm afraid this will break down. It's fear and negative is always being put in their ears, praise God. And this does not build you up. So you have to be careful. If a child keeps hearing they're dumb, they're ignorant, they're stupid, and they're ugly, they keep acting. After a while, they start acting that way. Because why? They hear that all the time. So you have to be careful what you hear. Do not listen uh, to things that are not building and not up to and lifting you up in the precious name of the Lord. Praise God. And, and it said unto them, so take heed what you hear. In other words, be careful what you hear. For with what measure you met, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. Praise God. With what you take in that you hear and start to apply it in your life, praise God, God will give you more as you take it in and say, oh yeah, that's right, praise the Lord. Uh, I believe that. And he will start giving you more. So you have to be careful what you hear. A lot of people tune out. I remember when my kids was coming up, I'd be talking to them. And I'd say, don't you hear what I said? You know, you're telling them one thing, they're going an entirely different direction. Many times people come to church, say, sir, it's their body is there, but their mind's off somewhere else. They're really not hearing what you're saying. And you're wondering, well, why aren't they growing? Because why? They are not listening to you. This particular parable is talking about the sower that sowed the seed, praise God. And he said to you uh, that uh, uh, some that heard the word of God and keep it. Uh, I want to jump up, come back up, go with me, digressing back up to verse 20. And it said, these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear. Verse 20 in that same fourth chapter, same mark. Such as hear the word and receive it. So you hear the word, take it in, and then when you hear, you'll bring forth fruit, some 30 full, some 60, and some 100. Well, why didn't they all bring forth 100? Because some only met in at 30 and only stayed there. They didn't want to hear beyond that. Like some think, well, it's good, you know, uh, for some things to be a pretty good child of God, but we don't want to go that speaking tongue tough. And we don't want to go any further than that. And we don't want to go to this holy living, all this emotion. And we don't want to get into that. And a lot of people, so they don't hear and don't want to take it in, don't want to receive anymore, you know, and with the joy and the peace of the Lord to grow in him. Praise God. So, but then when you receive it, you can bring forth the fruits 30 fold and you can grow. Start at 30. All right, that's fine. But here's some more and apply some more. Go on up to uh, 60 and then bring forth the 100. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't this beautiful? This is really beautiful. So that is our first step in faith. You must hear because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Doubt comes the same way. Praise the Lord. Uh, if I go to church, I don't go anywhere where they're not preaching the word of God, that God's a healer, that God's a deliverer, that God's in spirit fill you, praise God, that God can keep you, hallelujah, thank and praise the Lord. And, and when you hear this, hear the positive word of God, do you know what I do? Uh, when I'm uh, uh, reading the word of God, and I've been reading in the Gospels, and I have a tape in the New Testament, and uh, well, the sisters tell me about it, beautiful, lovely, lovely. As I'm reading, I put the tape on, and like I'm reading this fourth chapter St. Mark, I'm playing the tape, and I'm reading. You know what's happening? I'm getting doubly reinforced. I'm reading it out of my mouth and my eye, and I'm hearing it again, and it's just double reinforced. It's beautiful. And I go to bed at night, praise God, with pushing in tapes that's, that's uh, uh, reading uh, the gospel or the word of God or some preaching, le hearing the word of God as I go to bed at night or when I wake up in the morning, getting my mind, uh, you know, elevated. Because you see, children, the mind is like a computer. It's what you feed it. If you put something into it, it's not going to reject it. So if all you're putting into your mind is a lot of uh, Hill Street booze and all this other uh, filth and or, uh um, edge of night and all this other filth uh, thing that we see in people hopping in and out of the bed and all kind of vulgarity and profanity. If you're filling that into your mind, praise the Lord, then your mind doesn't get out of it. reading a lot of trash and uh, things and you're putting that into your mind. But you know, be careful what you feed your mind. 
Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible said when we, uh, we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, and be transformed in the renewing our mind. We got to hear so we can teach our minds, praise the Lord, to start reacting to positive things. Praise God to hold on to them in the precious name of the Lord. Now, our next step in, in faith, of course, is uh, confession. Positive confession, of course, in the Word of God. Uh, now, let's turn to the 11th chapter of St. Mark. St. Mark, the 11th chapter. And I'm going to turn over, and I want you to turn with me through the 11th. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, this is so beautiful, children. This is so beautiful. The 11th chapter of St. Mark. Praise the Lord. And we're going to start at verse uh, 24. Verse 24 of the 11th chapter of St. Mark. Praise God. And it says, Therefore I say unto you, uh, that whatsoever things, praise God, oh I'm sorry dear, I want verse 23, verse 23, verse 23 is what I want, 11 chapter St. Mark, verse 23, and it says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Praise God. Do you see that? When you And it goes on down to tell you that uh, when you desire something, pray, believe, you'll receive it, of course. But when you say something, a positive confession, as long as of what the Word says about you, praise God, hallelujah. The thing of it with the children of God, we take our eyes off the promise of God, and we look at the problems, and we cannot do that. No matter how bad things look, keep your eyes on what the Word said about you, praise God, hallelujah. Uh, it said, uh, you know, words have power. Pe you know, people have said words that can cut people to pieces. People have said words that have given people a broken heart, and they went on their beds and lay down and died, glory to God. Words, hallelujah, have caused nations to go into war. And uh, But to really speak positive words, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. A man is in court. When that judge speaks those words, that might a lot of times mean his life or his death. Words have an effect on our lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you need to start confessing what the Word of God says about you. You know, um, in our Christian bookstore we have here on the island, and it naturally, as you know, this is a summer resort on the island, and there's not that many people down here, and many of the stores close up, and just a few necessary stores, like the drugstore and, uh, you know, grocery stores, and naturally the package store, stays open, you know, and they're, um, uh, so it's not that much business, in other words, but we have claimed year-round prosperity. We have claimed a certain amount of money a day. Now, it would almost seem impossible, but we have claimed that, and we kept claiming it, and we claimed year-round prosperity for the bookstore for three years. Praise God. Hallelujah. And just at the end of that three years, did it start coming to pass? But we kept on confessing it. Glory to God, hallelujah. And uh, when, when the winter time, like I said, we was claiming year-round prosperity. And we kept on confessing that. And I want you to know, it's just so beautiful. God sent in two people today that brought us up to the quota and a bit over it that we had been asking the Lord for. Glory to God, hallelujah. Just keep on confessing it. You know, I was talking to one of the sisters one day, and I said, I'm not going to be one of these type of people that say, you know, and, uh, um, uh, you know, you can't remember things. Well, I'm getting old and that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm not supposed to remember things. No, no, no. I have the mind of Christ, God said. I have the mind of Christ and greater is he is in me than he is in the world. So I don't have to accept those things. Praise the Lord. What I will do is when something leaves my mind, I, I, I will positive confess. Oh, it'll be that. Oh, I'll get it back. And I just move on and later on it does come back. And confess it. Hallelujah. Like you mean it. By your words, you're justified. The Bible said, you know, uh, uh, if you start hearing the word of God, get it in your heart. Get it in your mind. And when you get it in your heart, the Bible said, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Praise the Lord. Because why? You have this in your heart. Hallelujah. And no matter what comes about, you're confessing it. When a problem comes up, you'll say, oh yeah, I can get that job. We can do that. 
Praise God. Because God said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Hallelujah. I'm just confessing what the word says about me. Hallelujah. I'm going to be in health and I'm going to prosper even as my soul prospers. Glory to God. I'm just confessing what the word says about me. If I abide in you, hallelujah, and your words abide in me, Lord, you said, I can ask what I will and it shall be done unto me. Praise God. And I believe that. Glory to God. I remember when the Lord spoke to me and told me, I want you to come off of your job. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I just started listening to positive tapes, faith tapes. I didn't want to listen to anything that said, oh, you know, be careful and this, that. And I wanted to get the positive word in, in my mind. Listen to positive tapes. Listen to things on faith. Glory to God. And when I did, the Lord just starts applying my needs. Hallelujah. And I believe that without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, things have been got kind of tight a lot of times. But praise God. I just say, Lord, you said. Hallelujah. You said. Glory to God, that no good thing will you withhold from me if I walk up right before you. Hallelujah. You said, glory to God, that you would perfect that which concerneth me. Hallelujah. You said, hallelujah, you would supply all my needs uh, according to your riches and glory. And you know, when you read God's word, you got to stand on the word. Praise God, praise God. Confess what the word says about you. Positive confession. Don't always say, oh, poor me, and I don't know how I'm going to make it. And Lord, look like the worst thing always happened to me. And usually it does. Usually it does. Because it came out of your mouth. The Bible said, if any two of us touch and agree on anything that we ask in his name, praise God, that he would do it. So when I ask something, if it's what the word says, now listen, you don't go asking things that don't coincide with the word. Your enemy's head on a plate, you know. God's not your your, your henchman, and, and God's not going to be a hitman, praise the Lord. But uh, things that you desire, just keep confessing them. Listen, theologians tell us it was 25 years before Abraham got Isaac, but God made the promise. Praise God, praise God. And you can hold on to that. He promised the children of Israel he was going to bring them out. Hallelujah. And the Lord did it. See, the thing of it, uh, people, you know, after a while they stop confessing. But keep confessing what the Lord says about you. I uh, often like the Shemanite woman. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when she told uh, Isaiah, it is well. Hallelujah. And there her son was lying on the bed dead, if you please. D-E-A-D. -E the Bible said dead. But she got in her uh, chair and told a young man, said, don't stop. Because we're going to the man of God. And the husband said, what's wrong, honey? It's no new moon or Sabbath. No church tonight. Where are you going? She said, hey, I'm, you know, off to see the man of God. It's as well. You know, you want to know what was wrong. Something wrong. She didn't bother upsetting him about it. The child lying upstairs dead. She didn't accept that. Praise God. She was claiming the victory. She went. And when she came to the man of God, he said, here comes that Shemanite. He said, uh, uh, the Lord has revealed to me what is wrong. Praise the Lord. And then he told him. Uh, the uh, her, his servant, I think it was Gehazi. I'm not sure. Well, one of his servants, he told him to go out and to uh, see what was wrong and ask her what it, what is wrong. Ask, is it well with her husband? It is well. It shall be. Well. Is it well with your child? What did she say? It is well. It shall be well. She held on by faith, a positive confession. Praise God. Confessing what the word says. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No matter what the situation is, you confess the word. I'm a child of the Lord Jesus Christ, born by blood of blood of the Lamb, got victory in my life, walking victoriously in the love of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise God on my way to heaven. Hallelujah. Victory in my life, overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, some of us, we confess so many negative things. We confess, oh, pains, and we confess them and claim them. My backache and my arthritis and my pains, we confess these things. Praise God, we claim them. Why not confess the positive thing? Confess, sir, uh, you know, even in healing, I have a tape in healing. I tell people to confess it. You know, I mean, I've had some excruciating pains. I'm so bad, I've had... Uh, perspiration break out on me, but I kept confessing by his stripes, I am healed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Keep confessing what the word says about you. Glory to God. There's power in the word. Didn't Jesus confess the word when the centurion came to him? Praise the Lord. 
and he said, uh, uh, he told him uh, his, his servant was sick. And Jesus said, I, listen to what he said. Now, this is not positive. He said, he never said, well, maybe I'll lay hands and we'll see. But he said, I will come with you and heal him. Praise God. Praise God. I will come with you and heal him. Glory to God. And then the satyrian said to him, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. Because I say to this man, come and he comes and that one go and he goes. But you see, he said, but speak the word only and my servant will be healed. Praise God. He realized the power of the word or the positive confession in the word. Praise God. And when Jesus did, the servant was healed at that self same hour. He understood what it was to give an authority, get the word and have people obey it. Praise God. Do we realize how powerful confessing what the word said about us, how powerful it is? Do you realize the world was framed by the word of God? Praise the Lord. By speaking the word. Hallelujah. As we told you before, you can have a child and you can continually tell that child what they are. You can keep telling them how dumb they are. Understand that? After a while, they'll start acting that way. You can do this by, you know, hear it and keep confessing that thing and confessing it. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But you keep confessing the positive things of God. No matter what happened, confess what the Word says about you. No matter what the problems look like, confess. Keep confessing overcoming. Keep, if you need finance, keep confessing the prosperity. Get a prosperity crypt and keep confessing it. Praise God. Because it just said, whatever that you say, you shall have whatsoever you say. If it's in the Word of God, just keep confessing it. Praise the Lord. Keep confessing what it said. But you got to hear it. you got to get it on the inside. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you keep it until it gets in your heart and your mind. That's why the Bible said, let the Word of God dwell in you richly. Richly, if a man is rich, I mean he has plenty of money, not necessarily in his hand, but he might have it in the bank or stocks of money. Praise God, but when he can get on it, he has plenty and abundance. Praise the Lord, and that's what we do. We get the abundant word in our heart and our soul. Praise God, praise God, and then we start confessing it. We start confessing it. Praise God, praise God, and we start talking about what the word says about when people, uh, often uh, tell me things. I used to have a saying, you know, like we've all had sayings. I used to have a saying, when people give me something or it's overwhelming, oh, I can't stand it. And I thought one day, sure, I can stand it. I can stand anything the Lord will do for me. Praise the Lord. But, you know, we confess all kind of things. You know, we say to her, uh, things that come out of our mouth. We have to be careful. Praise God. You know, uh, like I said, nothing good ever happens to me. And some of our confession is, oh, it's such a gray day. You know, we're confessing all these things. But start confessing the positive thing. Praise God, this is a day that the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. And keep on going. Praise what the word says about you. Hallelujah. And you know when a problem come, uh, oh, don't I, uh, you know, some people say, well, I'm so lonely. I'm alone. I don't have nobody. When you have Jesus, you have somebody. Because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hold on to that. Confess what the word says about you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why you got to hear the word. That's why you need to go and sit on a preacher. Uh, how can you hear without a preacher? Uh, preaching the positive word of God. Or just like I said on tape, listening to the positive word of God. Reading the positive word of God. Read it out loud. Praise the Lord and hear it. Hallelujah to God. Then you'll get it in your heart in abundance and you'll start to speak it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke the word in many cases. When he spoke to demons, he, he used the words. I say unto you, praise God, hallelujah. Uh, when he healed the many things, I say unto you, arise. Or I say unto you, hold your peace and come out. Praise God, he spoke, the word did it, hallelujah. He sent his word even to heal us. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Do you realize that the stars and the sun and the moon is up there by the word of God? By just the word that he spoke? They rise and go down and come up by the word. Praise the Lord by the word. It's how powerful it is. So you, but the thing of it, what we like to do, we like to say, well, I'll try this for a while and it doesn't seem to be working. But keep on confessing it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Keep on confessing it. Keep on confessing what the word of God says about you. Because like I said, we confess so many negative things, you know. We, we uh, you know, like, oh, my poor heart, you know. Or uh, if they keep doing that again, I'm going to have a heart attack. You know, I've heard people say that again. If they keep bothering me like that, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. I heard people say sometimes, oh, that's, they're driving me crazy. Am I going to drive me crazy? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I driving me crazy? 
No, indeedy. I say to my kids sometimes when they get upset when they're little, I said, maybe you're trying, but I'm a fool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring you and stay sane. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we always like to, you know, say all kind of things like, oh, look like everything is, you know, happened to me. If anything can go wrong with me, it will go wrong. Praise God. We start confessing those kind of things. But you know what I do? Hallelujah. I've even confessed the positive things over my car that wouldn't run at some point. Now I gotta have another one now, better new one, the Lord bless. But it was at a point that uh, wouldn't I would get out and say in the name of Jesus, I'm the Lord's child, and we get ready to go somewhere, you know, praise God. Start working. And you know, one time I was doing, uh, we got ready to open uh, the bookstore again. I think I've told you the story many times that uh, we didn't have money to pay the rent. And the sister was working at the uh, hospital. And she asked me to uh, uh, do the laundry of the senior citizens there because she was going to do it and something happened. Uh, she did her wash and dry. You know, she didn't have one at the time. And so I did it. Praise the Lord. And the washer was acting up on me one night. And I'd go past and pat and said, now you got to work now. Praise the Lord. You got to work. You have got to work. Well, uh, does that sound funny to you? Dozen people, I've seen people kick their cars and said, yo, no good thing. You'll never act right. I've seen people, you know, same thing with the washing machine. This old piece of trash makes me sick. It never acts right. But confess what the word of God says about it. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, God even said in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, he bless you coming in. he bless you going out. he bless you your garden. he even bless your animals. Praise God. Confess what he said. I've seen people say they walked out into their garden and, and confessed. To the, to the plants, you got to grow, you got to produce fruit, because God said he's with me, and, and he'll bless and prosper my hand, and whatever I said it to do, praise God. I've even told people that have, have insects in their house, and, and flies or rodents and things, I said, what, what I many times I say, you know, uh, God said no plague will come down my dwelling, you got to get out of here. Then, of course, you use the last part of faith we're going to tell you about, and give them the worst, uh, uh, you know, um, whatever thing you call it that uh, you spray on it, whatever you use to get rid of them. Praise God. You do that, but by faith you already spoke to them. I was a little field mouse because we live out in the field. A little field mouse did that one time. He came in there. I said, God said no plague will come nigh my dwelling. And I put this poison down, and when I spoke to him, he went right on over and ate it and went downstairs and died. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just speak the positive word, what the word of God said unto you, children. Glory to God. And uh, uh, you will do this as you step in faith. Now, like I said, hearing and then confessing the positive confession. And, of course, we go into the next step, which tells us to meditate, to meditate on the Word of God. And that's Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. And that's what we, uh, we're we going to talk about next. And we want you to find that with us now. Joshua 1 and 8 as we turn to that. Praise the Lord. So we want you to know that uh, it will work. And you know, start confessing. Start confessing. Start confessing uh, what God says about you. Continue to do this. Transform the renewing of your mind. Let your conversation be positive. You know, we got a lot of things to undo, children. I mean, we really have. We've been here and saying negative things all our lives. Praise the Lord. Like, oh, well, if the worst has happened, it'll happen to me. And nothing I ever do, it never works out. I, I never seem to get out of debt. I never seem to overcome. Start confessing. Oh, yes, by the grace of God, I'll overcome. I'll overcome. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, I never seem to get ahead. Confess by the grace of God. He said we'd be the head and not the tail. Praise the Lord. And keep confessing what the word of God says about you. Hallelujah. And you will be blessed above measure. And I just, uh, you know, want to keep uh, letting you know this. And letting you know how God can bless you. And if you keep applying these things to your life, glory to God, you can be blessed through the word of God. Hearing the word of God. See, there's a process and you have to continue. As I was telling the saints tonight, this is a lifetime journey. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. This is a lifetime journey. And you have to keep uh, confessing what God said about you and hear it. Praise 
daydreaming the blind eyes are blind open. You know, meditate on, keep it in your mind. You know, the devil had a good point, and he always uses a little truth, but he doesn't give you all truth when he started people on meditation. But he had them chanting on the wrong thing. But when you meditate in the Word of God, praise the Lord, it will give you a positive, hallelujah, outlook on life and in your what you're doing. Praise the Lord. But it says that then you'll start, when you start uh, thinking about it, get it in your heart and soul, think, uh, speaking it, meditating on it, then you will start to do it. That's the next step. You must observe to do all that's written there, and then you'll start to do it. And when you do that, the Word of God says, you'll make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. You can't fail, children. You can't fail. You will be successful. Glory to God. Isn't that, I mean, this thing is getting better. Hallelujah. Uh, you, you, but when, you know, when you meditate and other things and chant and you're just letting yourself open to a lot of demonic spirits, praise the Lord. But when you're meditating on the Word of God and, and you're, if you're going to major, major in the Word, praise the Lord. Uh, you ever woke up in, in the middle of the night just praising God, speaking in tongues? And that's why I said read the Word the last day you go to bed. Let the Word be in your heart, soul, and mind. I have a tape beside my bed as I spoke before. I play the Word. Praise God. Wake up with the Word. Memorize the Word. Keep the Word in your heart. That's why the Lord said He wanted it at tables of your heart, meaning memorize it. Praise God. We sing the Word. When we got ready to open the bookstore in need of that positive stretch, we start singing the word of God. Hallelujah. God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. If I abide in you, my words abide in you. Ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And you see all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. And yea means yes and amen means let it be so. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So then when you start to meditate on it, glory, get it in your heart. Get these other things out of your mind. You know, these other things that are, that, that are a lot of junk, huh? uh, a lot of world conditioning. You know, I'd be going through the A&P and, and, and the store and stuff, and people would say to me, I don't know how we're going to afford these prices, and they're going up and they're getting worse. I never worry about that, because God said he'd supply my need. He didn't say he would just supply, uh, supply when, when things were uh, going well, whether there's a, 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 a de depression or, or a, a recession or, a, or whatever there might be. Praise the Lord. The Lord said that he would supply my needs. He didn't say it had to be a certain time, season, or a certain condition. So I never worry about these things. Never fill your mind with worry, because worry and doubt is faith in reverse. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So start to do it. After a while, you'll get it in you so much that you'll have to do something about it. You'll start to speaking it. Then you have to start acting upon it. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Start, start moving out. Start observing. Start to do things. Do all of that's written there, and not some of it, but do it all. Step out on the word of God. This same Joshua, praise the Lord. I love it. In the when he was talking in the sixth chapter of uh, of Joshua, where the Lord told him to march around the walls of Jericho uh, six times. Now listen, children. If he had looked at the problem and not at the promise, this big impregnable wall. Now, I understand through theologians, it was so wide, it was like a three-lane highway that looked like they had chariot races on top. And here are these people with no ammunition, praise the Lord, nothing but marching around the walls. Hallelujah. One day they marched around the stop. Second day, on to the sixth or the seventh day, glory to God. And then I want to show you what Joshua did. Uh, in chapter 16 of the 6th chapter, Joshua said, and he said, it came to pass the seventh time, the priest blew the trumpet, and then Joshua spoke, and Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord has given us the city. I want you now to open your mouth and praise God. Hallelujah. And when they praised him by faith, and then, the, and then Joshua said, in the 17th verse 7, the city shall be a curse and all that's there in he said you know he let them know he talked as if they were already inside the city he told them all the silver and the golds and the vessels of brass are to come and sacred unto the lord come in the treasure of the lord and verse 20 said so then the people shouted and the priest drew blew the trumpet and it came to pass when the when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted a great shout that the wall fell down so that the city Oh, so that the people went into the city 
every man straight before him, and they took the city. Glory to God. You see, that's it. When you confess what God said you're going to have, what the Word said about you, act upon what the Word said about you, praise God, hallelujah, you cannot fail. You will have good success. God will take you through Glory, 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 hallelujah. You have got to do it. You have got to do as they did. You have got to go for it. You just can't keep saying it. Well, you know what? You don't have to be saying it to other people. Because sometimes when you say it to other people, they think you're bragging a lot of times. And a lot of times they think that, uh, you know, they'll try to change your mind and they'll get you all upset and you'll get out of God's will and you'll turn things around. But you keep confessing the Lord. Lord, you said you're going to do some good things for me. Lord, you said you were going to bring me through. Lord, you said that no good thing you'll withhold from me if I walk up right before you. God, you said if I seek you first, that hallelujah, hallelujah, and your kingdom of heaven and your righteousness, that everything I need will be added unto me, Lord. Now, this is being short and this is being short. You said that. Lord, you said if I pay my tithes and my off, give my offer, that you would open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing. I won't have room enough to receive. And that means an abundance. I should have more than what I need. You also said you'd rebuke the devourer for my name's sake. Now, I am a tithe payer. Hallelujah. You said you'd take care of the things that are consuming me, the mountains of bills, the, the problems, the, the mountains. You said you would do it. Praise the Lord, and I'm turning it over to you. Glory to God, hallelujah. But I, I preached a sermon one time using about Moses when uh, they were standing there in front of the Red Sea with Pharaoh's army in the back and, Mo and uh, the Red Sea in the front. And the Lord t had told Moses, said, why do you stand here, you know, murmuring and complaining to me? He said, speak to the people and tell them to go forward. Stretch out your rod. Yes, and Moses had the rod, and God had put the power was in that rod. He said, stretch it out and tell them to go forward. Praise God. And I preached a sermon one time. Use what you've got and go ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because if you've got the word of God in you in abundance, speaking it, hallelujah, meditating on it, you've got all kind of power. So use what you've got and go ahead. Move on out. Step out on his word. Praise the Lord. Because why? We will turn to James, the second chapter. James, the second chapter. And while you're turning to James, I just want to add something in here. Children, don't wait till you need a house or a car to use your faith. Use your faith continually every day. Plants of faith. Uh, try, uh, use it for a parking area in front of a certain store. Use it, keep on confessing it. Keep on confessing it. Keep on going and see it. Use it for uh, a pair of gloves. A pair of stockings, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Without charging them and trusting, let the Lord bless you to have the finance for that. Use it for uh, just all kind of little things. You see, uh, the Bible tells us that the mustard seed, faith, see, a lot of people think wearing that mustard seed works. No, it doesn't. It's a parable. And Jesus said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, what it means is a uh, mustard seed is the smallest of the herbs of the seeds and when you plant that and water it and dung it and let it grow it becomes the largest of the herbs the Bible said and then the birds can lodge in it your faith starting out no matter how small it is when you start planting it into the Word of God continually 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 praise the Lord then it will expand and other people can find uh, rest and comfort in the faith that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the real big problems come, you won't get all nervous and shake it, praise God, and do the wrong things. You will be ready for it. You will be saying, oh, praise the Lord, yes, yes, oh yes, we can take care of this problem. None at all. Praise God, hallelujah. Because God will be with me. He'll never forsake me. I know it will work out all right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And any muscle you use, naturally, the more you use it, the stronger it gets. So that's a way to use it daily. A fighter does not wait until the day of his bout to start exercising for his fight. Praise God, he'd be all flabby and out of shape. But he starts right after one fight, start exercising for the next. Same with the Olympics. Right after one Olympic uh, tryout, they start exercising for the next one, whether it's a year, two, four, afterward. And that's the way we keep going. Keep applying your faith. Okay, have you got the second chapter, James? We got the second chapter, James. All right. I want to show you. Uh, I'm going to start reading at verse 14. It said, What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? 
And then it goes on to tell you about if a brother or sister be naked or daily food, and we say to him, depart in peace, you know, not giving them things we need. Said even the so faith, if it has not worked, is dead being alone. You see what that's saying? If you don't have faith enough to share, you got two chickens in your freezer, and you know your brother and sister's hungry, and you don't have faith enough to share one of those chickens and trust God that He's going to bring you another one. What kind of faith is that? Faith without works is dead being alone. You say, oh, I have faith in God. Praise the Lord. But that's dead faith. Uh, 18 verse said, if thou, uh, you, yeah, a man may say thou hast faith in, and you say I have works. Well, show me the faith. Uh, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. If you have faith, it will manifest something, children of God. Faith works. Faith is one of the fruits that will produce something. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank and praise the Lord. Uh, verse 20 said, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Uh, so I heard a minister say he was preaching and he was praying for a lady and she was sitting in a wheelchair and he says to her, uh, Do you have faith? The God can heal you. She says, oh, yes, I have all the faith in the world. So he prays pray for her. He said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, rise up. Well, she looked at him and she said, I can't get up. I'm, I'm crippled. Well, I mean, he knew that, but she made no effort. See, that's dead faith. That's dead faith. So you must put the faith in action, children. You must put move out on what the Lord said. Step out on it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I want to share something with you here. I uh, had asked my husband about a couch, and uh, praise the Lord, and he had said, well, no, um, not at this moment, and the couch was getting a little bad, and I knew the Lord wanted me to have better than that, praise God, so what I did, I told, I said, Lord, you said faith about works is dead, I cleared the couch out of the house, praise God, because it was a spring coming out, and uh, uh I cleared it out of the house, and in order to get it out the door, I had to saw the legs off, so I know that I could not bring it back in. And I cleared the space. I said, Lord, now I've cleared the space for you to fill. And every time I pass it, I would, I would confess, thank you, Lord, for filling the space. Thank you, Lord, for filling the space. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for supplying my needs. I want you to know it was within a week or two that someone called me, said they heard I was looking for a couch, brought it right to my door, gave it to me, would not accept anything for it, praise the Lord, and they had a couch cover on it with, with, the, with matching my interior of my living room just perfect. See, that's the way God will work. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And when you start really meditating on this and getting it in your heart and getting it in your soul and in your mind, praise God, God will start putting it in your subconscious mind, praise the Lord. Because I can remember another situation where the washing machine, uh, was acting up and was really getting pretty bad and I uh, had spoke to my companion about it and I, and I had a, a, a night a vision a dream about it at night and I was going to have a and it said a, a Kenmore and I thought I had a charge at Sears so I spoke to my husband about getting the Kenmore and he says well not right now we don't run up any more bills praise the Lord so I just went on but I knew the Lord had shown me a Kenmore washing machine well, I was talking to one of the children of God and about, uh, you know, what had happened and, and just relating the story. And she said to me, oh, my husband has been doing caretaking here and I think he has an extra machine. Would you want it? I said, oh, sure. Well, they came over. I wasn't home. I was working. They came over. They brought the machine, took the old one out, put the other one in. When I came home and looked at it, it was a Kenmore. Praise God. Praise God. Step out on what God tells you to do act upon it. Just small thing. I remember one night I told someone that I was uh, I live on, on Chappaquiddick and the ferry was over there and I came over. It was the last ferry that night and it was dark and I lived about three and a half miles from the ferry and my car wasn't over there. I guess someone had taken it and I really didn't have any money with me because I only had a checkbook. I didn't even have a thin dime. Praise the Lord. And so I, I had, just, I just said, Lord, you said you supply my needs. I don't want to walk this distant home, and I need uh, to make a phone call. So I went over and put my hand in the bottom of the phone. I thought, well, perhaps you know something fell down there. But then, when, but when I turned around and looked over beside, Hallelujah, the dock of the ferry was shining under the light, a thin dime. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God will supply all your needs. All you have to do is step out on it, trusting for the small things as well as for the big thing. Hallelujah. Then when the Lord had told me to uh, put a down payment on the car, 
uh, I had went shopping with my kids and I was going to get a new car, 1977 at the time, and it was $5,000, and I put $10 down on it with faith, praise the Lord, which goes into a very uh, long story of how the Lord just really blessed me and they held that for $10 for about three weeks for me and how my husband had said, well, you can get it, but I'm not co-signing because uh, he said, I don't want to uh, run up some other accounts. But praise the Lord. I said, all right, but you don't mind if I get it? He says, no. So I went on and uh, talked to the banker and everything, and I didn't even have a full-time job, and, and he had to fill out the application because I wasn't going to lie, and I didn't have a full-time job. I was only working part-time. How the Lord blessed and supplied. I didn't have a co-signer, anything. Praise the Lord. And the Lord just took care of of the matter and bought the car for me and the car it was pay is paid off now you know isn't god wonderful just step out on him by faith glory to god you've got to move out we also told you about uh, the uh christian bookstore the lord told us to start it we claimed the building we spoke that we were going to get the building by faith in the downtown area of Oak Bluffs, not somewhere out in the hill, praise the Lord, in the little mini mall there. We spoke by faith that we were going to get it. We went, we claimed it one day, because he, he, one day he had, uh, you know, he had told us a few times that it belonged to someone else was going to have the building. On the job, the Lord told me to call him and claim it by faith. I did this, praise the Lord. Didn't even have the money to pay for it. As I've often related, the sister was working over at the hospital and I when I helped her do some laundry for the long term care it was just enough to pay the first month's rent praise the Lord Lord blessed it uh, man the local a druggist on the island gave us some fixtures praise the Lord and uh, brought them right to the door we only had to pay fifteen dollars for uh, you know for uh, having the truck that uh, brought him there just a tip to him praise the Lord and then uh, we wrote checks wrote checks I think it was about twelve hundred dollars overdrawn and God had the banker take care of them, and I would call him when he tell me the amount was there, and I said, I'll bring the money right in. I said, I'll take care of it, and the Lord would send the money in, and then we opened. The first day we opened, praise the Lord, we had an all-night prayer, and the first day we opened, the Lord filled a college professor from Brown University with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues of the Spirit of God, give us. When you step out on him, children, the Lord had told us to, around when we started the radio program, praise the Lord, well, I had to call I called, and God said, go ahead and start. There was a space open. We took the space, praise God. There was only four of us. There was only four of us. There was four of us in the prayer meeting. One was my son who was not working. So, you know, it wasn't the finances that uh, we had. But God said, if you do this and meditate and move out in the Word, he, you'll prosper, and you'll have good success. And I want you to know that God opened the way for that radio broadcast. I think 15 minutes, it was... Uh, it was much more, and, and the Lord blessed that her, uh, the price was, was fixed, altered a bit, and the Lord blessed someone pray, paid for the first uh, week's broadcast, and then, glory to God, hallelujah, the Lord opened another door for us to go to another radio station, and then on into a... Uh, to uh, New York and, and Jersey, praise God, and by faith we're speaking that we're going to be going next into Pennsylvania, into Washington, and into Virginia. Those are the routes the Lord has told us to take, and we're speaking to it by faith, praise God, hallelujah. And these are the things that happen, and God has never failed to supply the needs, even when there was just two of us in the prayer group. So it's a Marsha and I, my assistant, has been very faithful over the years. God bless, glory to God, hallelujah, and still sent the finance in. We've had to praise him in many cases, coming in, knowing that the bills were due. We praise the Lord. We worshiped him. That's what the word said about us. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desire of your heart. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you're receiving, you'll have them. We moved right on and praising God. We needed to find this, glorify him. Next day, a check came in the mail for $900. One time there was a, uh, we thought one sister usually sent about $50, and we thought, Sister Marsha thought, well, no, sister, no, I know what it is, but the Lord prompted her to open it, when she opened it was $500, God has always did it, but he wants you to step out, you see, God said he's able to do exceeding abundant, above all we ask the thing, according to the power that works in us. In us, you see, we must step out. When he talked to the layman, he said to him, pick up your bed and walk. To the blind man, when he put the spindle on his eye, he said, go wash in the pool of Salaam. Praise the Lord. And you know, a lot of times, uh, 
sense of God. We, if things don't happen with us right away, we get discouraged. We, as you know, don't come to pass. We want to give up. But I would like to leave you with another 10th chapter of Hebrews around verse 35. 10th chapter of Hebrews, verse 35. Tells you to cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense and reward. Keep the confidence you have in the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how bad the problem looks, keep the confidence in what the word said. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will stand forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it said, after you've done, you, after you have need, it said, pardon me, cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense and reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. After you have done all that you can do, praise God, still keep confessing and holding on for the promise of what God said he would do in his word. That's just like that uh, Matthew 7 and 7, it tells us to ask and we shall receive, uh, uh, seek and we shall find, knock and the door will be open. Ask means, uh, praise God, after you've asked and confessed it and confessed it, seek. It's just like you need a job. If I say to you, a job's out there and you don't go anywhere, you keep saying, well, yeah, I need a job. But you get out and you make the rounds and you look everywhere you can and you seek and you seek and you knock on every door and you put everything you have got into it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then after you've done all you can do, you say, Lord, I have done everything and went everywhere that I can. Glory to God. Now the rest is up to you. I'm waiting on you. Praise God. Because faith works when you put it into action. So after you have done the will of God, you have need of uh, uh, patience that you can receive the promise. Praise the Lord. Even our waiting for him. The Bible says, yet a little while, he, th he that shall come, will come, and will not tarry. Now, verse 38, in the same uh, 10th chapter of Hebrews we are. Now the just shall live by faith. God wants his people living by faith. We have things too convenient. We have too many charge cards. We have too many other things that we can trust in. Uh, the banker, the doctor, uh, all the other things, uh, the charge play, all these things that we can trust in instead of trusting in the almighty God to bring us out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Said the, uh, uh, the just shall live by faith. That's what he wants. Do you realize without faith it's impossible to please God? That's what he wants us to do to... Uh, uh, we are to please him, and in order to please him, we need faith. Hallelujah. Because any man comes and must believe, number one, that he is. Number two, that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, that seriously seek him, that keep doing it according to the word of God, and it will come to pass. Oh, hallelujah. Don't you love it? Don't you love it? Oh, glory. Hallelujah. It's so exciting. And he said, uh, uh, but if any man draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him, just because... Things don't come about when you first speak them and do everything you do instead of holding on to them and say, well, maybe God don't want me to have this. And the word said you can have it. Praise the Lord. And maybe I'm out of God's will. God's will is his word. His word said by his stripes you're healed. His word said he'd supply all your needs. His word said whatsoever things you desire when you pray. Believe you're receiving, you shall have them. His, uh, well, he said, well, maybe God will only supply my needs and not my wants. What are we going to do with the 23rd Psalm that says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want glory to God. Hallelujah. Only problem you have is if you want it just to show out and to consume it on your lust. Praise God. But when you want it to, to help you and edify and to build up the body of Christ and to use it for his glory and for his honor, he'll give it to you. He'll give you your wants. He'll give you your desires. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But it says, uh, um, uh, my soul, uh, he has no pleasure in them that draw back. But it said, but we are not of them who draw back. We don't draw back, no matter how bad things are. But, uh, but unto, we're not the one to draw back. But of them believing to the saving of the soul. If we're holding on for soul, we're going to believe. I was just, a, a sister wrote me a letter uh, and told me that she had been holding on for 25 years for her husband to be saved. Praise God, he got saved. You know what happened? He got saved one, uh, the 25th year, and I think the next couple of years he was going on to glory. But she held on for his soul, no matter how bad it looked, praise God. She confessed it, hallelujah, went on about acting just like it, and that's what we must do, dear hearts. We must step out, hallelujah. After we have uh, heard the word of God, get it in our hearts into abundance, praise the Lord. Start confessing it, hallelujah, by faith, uh, hallelujah. Start meditating on it. Let it 
saturate your mind and your heart and your soul, glory to God, then start acting upon it, stepping out on the word of God, hallelujah, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that he is with you, that he will not fail you, that he's able to keep you, any, he's able to keep that which is committed into his hand. Children of God, you play this tape over and over. You get this uh, word in you. You get these steps of faith down. You step out on them because faith works. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And a fruit is something that is produced. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank and praise the Lord. We know by faith God is able to do these things. So many things that you've done, not by the crowd. Hallelujah. It's not my might. It's not my power. But it's by the Spirit of the Almighty, living God, that He will help you do these things. You don't have to boast or brag to other people, but just tell the Lord what He said. Hallelujah. I've read His word back to Him. Lord, you said. Hallelujah. It's been some close quarters and many tight things, but He has always supplied my needs. He has always, hallelujah, uh, blessed us. And kept us going, glory to God. Uh, whatever we need. Just in a, in a group of people of about, uh, oh, 10 or 12 people, the Lord has blessed you. He's taken up an offering of 240 some dollars. Praise the Lord. God has just provided it as we give it out, as we do what the Lord says do. Praise the Lord. As we step out by faith, not seeing, not knowing. Because, see, faith is something that you're not going to know. Now faith is the substance of thing hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, praise God, but faith can be now, praise the Lord, you don't see it, but you believe it, you hold on to it, embrace the promise, and go for it, glory to God, with everything you have, I heard one preacher said, pray like everything depends on God, and then get up and work like it all depends on you, thank him, praise the Lord, this is what the Lord wants you to do, children, and use your faith daily, start out with the little thing, keep confessing, praise the Lord, Start out memorizing the word of God. Get it in you in abundance, praise the Lord. Then start confessing it. Start thinking about it, meditating on it. Your daydream, daydream of the word. And then start going for it. Glory to God. And I guarantee you, hallelujah, because the only thing that can be guaranteed nowadays is the word of God. And I guarantee you in the word of God, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, hallelujah, you will grow in grace. You will grow in faith. Glory to God. Touch their hearts. Hearts, settle this word in their hearts, bless them with this word, hallelujah, that they will meditate on this tape, listen to this message again and again, be blessed by it, hallelujah, grow by it, hallelujah, that their faith will be manifested by it, glory to God and use them for your glory and for your honor, hallelujah, letting them know that you're real, that this works, thank and praise the Lord, oh, praise you, Jesus.